Welcome to the Regular Joe's Podcast. I'm Dave Pisani. I'm Barry Kay. And I'm Todd Pleasant. What's going on, everybody? Happy okay. birthday, Dave. It was Happy your birthday, birthday yesterday. Thank you. If you ask, if the listening public wants to ask what I did for my birthday, I had a slumber party. Yeah. <laughs> and we all got to play. Yep. Todd and, and Barry and I all hung out for two days. It wasn't really connected to the birthday. It was like the only weekend we can actually do it because we had some special projects to complete yeah but it was it was good to see you guys and I, I was joking that it was nice to be able to get together and have a couple cocktails without having to worry about getting back in the car and driving exactly two hours exactly. and which turned out to be a horrible drive home in the pouring yeah. rain so but was it a, it was a bad drive for you i i have yes. i have no idea why you know my ride home should be two hours and 45 minutes from dave's house i made it in two hours and 40 minutes on saturday I haven't done that in like four years. It's it's uh, there's well, always so something. you went from Westchester to Massachusetts. I went from Westchester to Long Island, and it took me two hours and forty minutes. So. Yeah. Wow. It's um, mm, yeah. No, good. I made really Sorry about bizarrely that. good time. No, it's not your fault. My, it was, my I mean, theory, well, I know I'm always the one to not drive because I'm in the middle. So, my, but, but I I, you know, I, I put out. it this way: when I got home, I was telling Maria like it took me a long time, but there was never any point where I felt like. I was, you know, like I mean, there was I never got into a near accident or anything like that. It was just bad rain. Yeah, so. no, it sucks driving. It's in just the a rain. crappy drive, but it was fine. Yeah, yeah. so but it was yeah, good to see had... you guys. It was good to to work on our projects, and it yes. was good to to hang out. Well, I guess we'll talk a little bit more about that as the show goes on. Yeah, yeah, we will. And not the projects; they're nothing Joe regular Joe's related. They're just our own sort of display projects. Um, but yeah. Yeah, well, we've talked about them all on the show. We did the com badges. We made put made some displays for them. Yeah, it was Pods. mostly displays for 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 stuff and using all of Dave's uh, cool uh, tools at his disposal between the laser cutter and the three D printers and everything. So Todd got some. Oh, he has his did, did some uh, upgrades stuff for, for my his, for uh, my, uh, my uh, Harper Smythe Harper mannequin. Yeah, so mannequin. Yeah, it was so, good. So good. Fun to hang out. Um, we're going to talk about one of the things that came out of the weekend was we watched the movie and does do all movies do movies held up? We talked about that sort of a little bit, but we're going to talk about a specific one. Maybe we'll revisit this topic, but there are varying degrees of of that. Um, and believe it or not, did we ever did we mention on the show? We, most of us gave up on The Walking Dead a very long time ago. Did who lasted longer? I, I Todd, think Barry I think... and I, I, I think I quit first, but Barry watched. It, took, it was behind where I was. I think you, we stopped around the same point, right? Season nine, uh, episode five. Where did you stop? I stopped, and I don't remember. I stopped after them, like attacking Negan's base and just they should have been okay. dead so, with the way they did so it. I stopped right. season 9 episode 5 when Rick got blown up sort of not really and then got taken away and that's that's when okay. I stopped. And that was where I gave up as well. You yeah. and I stopped. But, but I think you I were you were a couple weeks behind me because I remember saying I'm done, I've had it and then then yeah, you got to the same point. So yeah, so so none of us have seen it in like five plus years. Is the yeah, point. I don't know how many seasons. There's they been a did, lot of I... spinoffs. There's been a lot of additional content. We've missed all of it. And I guess the the question was, all right, n- now that they're they've got this new series they're with called Michonne the and ones Rick, who live. Yeah, the ones who live, and it essentially picks up right after that moment where Todd and I both bailed. We were questioning for each other. Um, maybe we should. Try it and see if we get back into it. Can see you walk you think? back? See what we think. And that's that's the question. Yeah. So we'll see. So we all watch that. So we'll talk and about and that. I, did you guys watch both episodes? Because there was an, uh, there's been one. two episodes since. Right. It no, came, I've, I've only seen on. one. Yeah. Okay, I've seen both. So. Okay. 
So we'll talk about that. Yes. So uh, that might be in, the answer s- to one of the questions. Okay. So, oh, anyway. maybe, or maybe yeah. not. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's go some random. Todd, what do you got? Okay. So my favorite show so far this year, Masters of the Air, uh, will conclude on uh, March 14th. On March 15th, uh, Apple Plus has a documentary uh, called The Bloody 100th about the oh. – real 100th um, uh, division of the Army Air Corps. And um, if you watch the trailers, there's technically some spoilers in there because you will see at least one person who survives. So you'll know somebody survives. Um, But there's interviews with some of the people, which were done years ago, and it looks like it'll be really interesting. And I think it'd be kind of cool once you follow this whole journey through to get... You know, it's it's. You remember in in Band of Brothers, they had the people kind of introducing things with their yeah, flashbacks. Yeah. This is kind of not doing that. But this is kind of going to that afterwards, and giving you a, you know, kind of different perspective on it. I'm I'm looking forward to that. I, I've I've really really enjoyed that show, and and um, yeah. So and it, it and I think there'll be a kind of a loss when it ends. So this is kind of a good way of wrapping it up. No, that's good. Yeah, I'm, that's I, I've been enjoying it as well, and and yeah. um, I looking didn't forward to the documentary. Weekends though, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm one behind. behind. Yeah. I haven't seen this weekend yeah. either. Yeah. Barry, um, what do you got? Super quick, Invasion season three is confirmed. I, I can't believe that show is. I can't believe season two existed, let alone that they renewed Have it you for seen season, season three. two. I got about halfway through it and it just stopped because I couldn't take it anymore. So I finished it and I got to tell you, it's funny. It's like, <laughs> like I like certain characters. I, I wish I could like pick and choose which plot lines they continue. Um, And I don't know. It's, it's yeah, it kind of astonishes me. I do think it's also being aired somewhere else right it's being aired in europe or some uh, there's another market oh, for well, you it. think it's it's created for another market and then just... and and they they co you think so yeah what's that what, what's it on apple, apple plus. plus i think it's uh, it doesn't sound like something no i think they've got it i think there's a a european connection that's that's also airing it that's not apple plus wow. so um i had read that uh, unless they have totally different sensibilities and like shitty shows it shouldn't matter it's probably France. I will tell it you, might this be France. Feels, this, I watch a lot of like stuff that's made for Europe, and and I'll say this is more that pace than our pace. Um, interesting, but hmm. not. Hmm. not I, I, I I'll ultimately I will watch season three, but I will tell you I'm not going to watch it weekly because it goes so slow. If you can't knock out like three episodes at a time, nothing's happening. Interesting. Okay, so James Gunn announced, not that he announced much, they changed the title of Superman Legacy to just Superman. Interesting. Okay. So Superman the movie was called Superman the, the movie. movie yes. The movie, yeah. In the U.S. So this In is the U.S. it was. Back when things were called the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so this is just called Superman, and they showed the, a picture of the logo. Very angular, yep. the, the Superman emblem. So interesting, and they're put. There's pictures. So like um, that, Rachel Brosnahan is showed a picture. Uh, you've seen the cast pretty much. So they're letting stuff out. That's just good. Um, that wasn't that exciting. You know, question while do did they film the Last of Us season two yet? Did we hear any of that, or that still hasn't even been filmed yet? I think it's in process right now. So I don't think they're starting just filming, if... but it, it's I think it's it's they're going forward with it. So yeah, I know I know that, but I'm wondering if he's going to do Fantastic Four first. It's it, we're not seeing that thing for a year and a half. I think that they're pretty far along on filming season two of The Last of Us, from what I remember mm-hmm. hearing. Interesting, because we're people are talking. And at about some it point, they'll just they'll get around to telling him he was in another season of Mandalorian. Like, oh, by the way, well, he'll just, spend he'll he'll spend a day in the in the recording booth, and then he'll know. <laughs> and then he'll know. That's right. To say, <laughs> yeah, you need to come in. We were just about to release season four, so. So, just speaking of of uh, filming seasons of shows, 
I had entertainment tonight on tonight while I was cleaning dishes after dinner. Wow, is that still and they a were, thing? It, apparently, it's still a thing. <laughs> okay. My TV happened to just be on the channel. It wasn't like I purposely went to it, but they were interviewing Millie Bobby Brown. Oh How is she going to play eleven at this point? She's a fully grown woman. There's no way they're going to have to really like dress her down to make her look. And like they're not 11 doing a time final. jump. Which, right. I mean, it, I just don't see how they're, they're not doing the time jump. No, they're not doing much of it. You know, it's, it's yeah. I don't know how they could. It kind of, it's got to pick up right where the last season left off, no? So basically, it's just, it's just I mean, the, the unfortunate now, result of, 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 you know, doing these shows and having the writer strike and all that stuff where it's been too many years since they filmed yeah. the last so, season. So basically, they're doing what they did with every 90s high school movie. Everyone who's supposed to be high school age will be in their late twenties. Okay. Yeah. John Travolta's yeah. actually going to play her boyfriend yeah, in this. Exactly. So it's, <laughs> it's uh, you know. it's just. I mean, I know they've all gotten older, but she, you know, she, she was the one out of the whole cast that I think really needed to still look a little younger than she actually is right now. Yeah. She can probably young herself down. She's I definitely guess. oldering herself up. Yeah. For sure. She's she still got kind of baby <clears throat> face. She she can. But it's still they look. It's ridiculous to look at them and insist that they're still in high school. It's just, yeah, I think she's like twenty or something. Twenty one, right? I think. Yeah, crazy. And she's getting. Did married. we know <laughs> Liam Neeson is in the in a remake of The Naked Gun? No, I definitely did not know I that. I just read that he's in a remake of The Naked Gun. Interesting. And I mean, in which role? In the Leslie Nielsen role? I guess the Leslie Nielsen role. <clears throat> like, okay, is he okay. like, That's I'm done? That's not something that needed being... to be remade. Okay? It just, it just... I don't know if it needed to be made in the first place. Well, but... you know, again, they were, there, was, there was a time when that stuff was funny. And, you know, like the airplane films and that kind of thing. But it was a different time. And... Yeah, God. I, I don't know if I'm... You and know then, what, though? Like, There's a lot of done... that silly humor in, like, the Austin Powers movies, and I think that a movie like that could hold up right now. It could, but it's a different... The, the, the other thing cool with the Austin Powers movies was it was it was like a a comic take on things we had seen seriously before. This if... is... It's <clears> like... <throat> I mean, you don't remake the Pink Panther movies. People have tried, but it doesn't they work. Have. Okay. And unless they make it fun of all his badass characters. Well, that's the thing. It, at least he's taking a break from making a movie about revenge, which seems to be. Oh, all no, this will be anymore. the theme. It will be about he's got revenge on it. truck drivers. He's got revenge on the, the Albanians. He's, gonna, he's got revenge he's on wolves. A very he's got revenge set of on skills. And yeah. Um, anyway, and I was like, really? What's up with that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, any other random i just i just wanted to throw in and i found this very interesting apparently nbc universal was being um sued by the current owner of the delorean trademark because apparently whatever deal they struck back in uh, i don't even know when it was when when delorean the brand of delorean was sold to the current company that owns it um i guess they had an agreement about how much what kind of license fees they would pay for the back to the future theme park usage and and everything and apparently uh the the appearance of the back to the future car and ready player one and this the current owner is claiming that they have not paid uh the proper royalties so there's like a, a lawsuit going and nbc tried to have it thrown out and the court ruled that no it's going to go to trial really but, that yeah. seems like crazy what if you drive a ford f-150 in this a show do you I'm have saying. to pay royalties so this is the thing okay when you have a movie and you drive a Ferrari or a Porsche or whatever else that you bought for that production, do you have to, like, kick something back to the people? I don't think so. You don't. But maybe the difference here is it was most likely a computer-generated version of the one from Back to the Future. So, well, But it's, it's also, you got to keep in mind, they're merchandising it and they're making money off of it. It's not just that they put the car in the movie it's all of the merchandise that they sell that features that car they're they're profiting okay, from it which I can means they have to pay because a, they, they, a, they, do a have, they, they do have dmc logos on them 
And but they don't even have the Back to the Future ride at Universal anymore, but they still sell DeLorean merchandise there. They still sell cards, they still sell t-shirts, they still so you know, if if, if NBC is profiting from it, they owe mm. a royalty. That's just, yeah. It's different than if you made a drama movie and the guy happens to drive the DeLorean. That's one thing. Yeah, I mean, think about it. This the DeLorean sort of is really a, a character. Thing. It became a character. The time machine is is, is more than DeLorean. just Sue it's more than just a car. So, I just thought it was interesting. Like, you know, who, you don't think of things like that, but apparently there's an agreement, and they may not have been. I'm saying allegedly may not have been fulfilling their end of the agreement. Oh, I have no you know question. Who they me? Um, but fanboy collectibles. <laughs> <laughs> okay. they, fulfill, they don't fulfill you todd they, they oh they fulfilled my vehicle the other day you were just there they filled it for sure yeah i was i was just there so. and and uh yes as always it's it was the happiest place in connecticut um there you go it, it um yep i picked up some cool stuff including i will say i i very inexpensive i really suggest the the terminator skull box i guess engagement box that's right yeah engagement ring so, box yeah that's if how you find if out if, if your to, if you're girlfriend to is really the right fiance. girlfriend and you want to like surprise her uh lift the top of the terminator's cranium off and have that ring waiting right there for her no even if she's not geeky and <laughs> if you are you present it to her and based on the look on her face you know if she made the right choice <laughs> that's right or girl in, in well i guess if you want to ask another a guy to marry you or another girl to marry we're for all we're yes, for all absolutely we hate all people equally. Um, get yourself out of this one Dave. i will say <laughs> what another thing from the same line that i picked up and he check this stuff out because this this stuff really is cool is a i got a cthulhu skull um very very cool stuff and and um, and, and you got me a jay and jay and silent bob funko did, pops yes. yep they're very cool. Yep. Thank you. Plenty of stuff to be had. Gifts for everybody. But this week, uh, there's a Hot Toys Mando Super Commando. That's up there for pre-order. Uh, Gentle Giant uh, Akbar statue. We don't see enough Admiral Akbar. That's a cool uh, statue, too. That is a cool statue. Uh, Sideshow Electra. Okay. <laughs> premium format. <laughs> if you love Jennifer Garner and Electra, you should absolutely buy that. You should buy that anyway. Um, she's going to be in the new movie, right? We'll talk about that after the commercial. But I got everything. Hot Toys and Sideshow and Pops and... and uh, What's the name of that new company, Todd? Uh, it, it, Nemesis Now. And like I said... Nemesis never Now. Never heard of them before. Check them out. But they got some really... Hey, if you're into they Skulls, cool stuff. they got you covered. So Hasbro, Kotobuki, they got everything. Check them out. Fanboycollectibles.com. You can be there in person like Todd was in Newtown, Connecticut. And tell them where I got Joe sent you. Um, yeah, it's, it's, they saying Jennifer Garner's in Deadpool. Yeah, I think that there's a lot of, uh, there's going to be a lot of cameos, so that, you know, makes, I guess it makes sense. She, I've been, I watch her video, her, like, farm videos, and she looks pretty ripped, so I wonder if she got in shape to be electric. I, yeah. I'm kind of wondering if this is going to be everything and everywhere all at Wolverine. Um, oh, I hope it's better than I that. I just I feel like the 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 people they talk about being in it are from such opposite ends of the spectrum. Maybe they'll just be in passing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's just like you know. I mean, I know we all love Jennifer Garner, but we all have to admit that that's one of the worst movies. Not just worst superhero movies. Not just worst Marvel movies. That is one of the worst movies I've ever seen. It's pretty bad, but it, it's it's a it's unwatchable. Other than with the sound off, so yeah, she scowls a lot in that. It was on the other day. I'm she like, does she scowl looks unhappy through the whole yep. thing. Yep. I felt bad for her, um, but really grossly okay. miscast, and then continued into that film. I just think that they thought Sydney Bristow was a badass, so she should play a, a superhero, but it didn't work. She should. I don't know what she. I'm pro Jennifer Garner. Okay. So we all watched this uh, Walking Dead, new Walking Dead show. Now, I haven't seen walk, uh, Walking Dead, I, I don't know how long. It's been seven years, maybe? I don't even know when I gave up. 
um, or how long it's been or anything like that. It's I all felt like maybe you gave up in the same season as us. You just gave up earlier. I don't think you yeah, started I mean, season uh, nine. I think you 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 stopped. Nine? This is season. There were that we many bailed seasons? in season nine. Season twelve just finished because it was a delay. But I think you you stopped at the end of season eight. Okay, but there've Whatever. also been. There was Fear of the Walking Dead, and there's been and other spinoffs. Of those. Other spinoffs too. What was the other? Was he, there was another? Daryl's got his own show, and oh, geez, who cares? I don't Did know. Did you guys watch any of that? No, I didn't watch any of it. I actually stayed with Fear of the Walking Dead a year longer than Walking Dead, and and then that went sideways too. Who's alive on Walking Dead? That, I know the, from what I know I'm not from sure watching I want to show. Know, okay, because like I really have paid no attention to this. We know Rick and Michonne. Rick and Michonne and that and his daughter, as of him leaving, was still alive. I guess, what's his face? Uh, what's that kid's name? Oh yeah, we saw him die. Carl. He died. We saw I Carl die. die. Carl. You didn't see Carl, Carl die? Boy, you really Carl. bailed out early then. Carl. Okay. Carl died. Carl. Anyway, um, so so this sort of jumps in as Rick is on this bridge blowing up, and then we kind of. I don't exactly know how many years. We, we work our way through like, well, five years, I it's guess. It's five right? years at the end of the episode that you that we all watched. And no, then they, in, within that episode, they say now. The last 15 minutes are in. Right, so that's your six. Mm-mm. Is it? Okay. Yes. No. Well, I saw the second episode, and it's your six. Trust then me. they're. Okay, so you're saying that's six years from when the. From the from when the when, when that uh, all right so spoilers everybody when that helicopter crashes that's six years after the bridge blows up so okay it was a that was a little misleading not misleading but it was stupid so they in the show they're like five years later and then they go to now okay so a year passed <clears throat> like really well the but they explain jump, that in the, the second they explain it in the minute, second episode wait. the time jump from when the bridge blew up. Okay. To from from nine season nine episode five. Okay, at the end of that show, there's a slightly more than five year time jump. There's almost a six year time jump right there. So if this is only six years later, it means nothing has happened in the three years since. How is that possible? I'm not going to try to do the math. Oh, I know. I'm just see what I'm saying, Barry. I I just know that. In this show, they said it was five years, and then a year passed, and it now, and when when they get to the now, it's six years later. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, so I um, if, if you want to just try to sort this out, Nerdist has a po- on on the Nerdist site. They work out. The, they go through the timeline, and by their by their telling, their the show started in 2010, and it was 2010 when it started. They are now in 2023. Okay. So it's more like nine years from when. Anyways. Okay. That's not what they're saying on the show. It doesn't matter. Well, maybe within the context of the show, this this particular show, time has passed on other shows. I don't care. Yeah. Well, that's that's part of it. If it's this hard to figure out, what's the point? Yeah. So. No, but. I feel like, okay, the question we all asked ourselves when we decided to do this the other day was, can you jump back in? And with the way this show is set up, you absolutely can jump back there's in. No, it's there's a no whole question. New, you, you, you just, it's a whole new thing. It's a little confusing, but it was semi-interesting. Like, what you know, there's cities and there's an army and... Well, and I, so know. my wife has watched all of it. And been stayed with it long after I bailed, Which and I asked sense. her at the beginning of in the middle of the first episode when because I'm she's watching it too. I asked her like, did did any of this was any of this shown in the series like those cities and those groups and those armies? And she's like, no, this is all okay. new. Okay, did she say that Michonne left earlier than the end of the show, or if did she follow yes. through the end? No, no, she she left earlier than the end of okay, the show. Okay, so that's the point we're at then in yeah. this show. Okay, that's what I'm saying. So if the show, yeah. so I think the the Walking Dead extended beyond Ex- this. show. Okay, so that's that's where it makes sense. Okay, so there's there's like three years of Walking Dead beyond this show. Uh, 
I will say, if I had a metal cable tethering me and I desperately wanted to escape, same, the thing I would thing. try to cut off would be the cable. cable. Is the metal cable? Yeah. Oh my god! We all said the same thing. <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's like, but that that brought me back to the episode I bailed after, where they have aluminum roofing yes. as their protection, as, as they're using and no one dies. Not not concealment, but cover. Okay, they're actually behind the aluminum. They're using that as as cover. Um, yeah, yeah. He had a belt strapped around his arm, which, I mean, I guess once he cauterized the wound, maybe he was okay. But like chopping your hand off as a as a means of escape, you could still bleed out. Okay, you oh, there's no bleed question. Bleed out. You wouldn't be running You're a lot. woozy so, from the lack of blood, as, loss of blood. As Barry and I know. Okay. Rick had his hand cut off. He didn't do it himself in in like the first no issue bunch issue of tw- episodes of the comic issue twenty eight. Okay, yeah, pretty yeah. early in the comic. So comic. that's that's two about two and a half years in. He got his hand cut. Got a, the governor cut his hand off. Had someone cut his hand off, and that's always been a thing. It's like like they've teased him losing his hand like four or five times. Oh, I remember. The show, yeah, there were you're like, like, oh, is this yeah. going to be it? And this was by far the stupidest way he could have lost his hand. Absolutely. Yep. And, 100%. okay, if if they were going to make, again, and I've only watched one episode, if they were going to make it like a, a liability of his, his whatever. No, he got a, spoilers, he got a new hand halfway through with a cool knife coming Except out of it. Yeah. So you wasted... The whole him cutting his hand yes. off. So, if you're going to make a prosthetic replacement for a hand that isn't functionally a hand, why do you even bother making it look like a fist? <laughs> you well, know, I, know I, think they, I know why. They did that. So, so he that doesn't he could... have, they don't have to CGI his hand out all oh, the time. Oh, I know, but what I'm saying is, it's like, make it a mallet or make it a ball or make it a pummel of some kind well the, the, yeah they made it a fist so that it, it he could beat the crap out of no but i'm saying it, you but. you could do that with other there are other things other shapes more efficient than a fist and and <laughs> anyway it's just the just reality like, is there outside of maybe nasa and i don't know what they have is there a cable that can't be cut with an axe on a and rock? i don't think these people have it I really don't. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> okay. I was like, yeah. what's he doing? Yeah. And yeah, that whole if this thing was, was his bizarre. plan, if this was his plan, okay, how hard would it have been to bring a piece of, smuggle a piece of metal that he could put under the cable and then cut it with the axe? But he's outside with rocks. There's rocks no, but I'm everywhere. Saying, a rock might shatter. But I'm saying if this was really his okay. plan, okay, there's ways of cutting the cable. Okay. He also had an axe in his hand. He could have just killed the guy that was tethering him. There's, there's other things he could have done. I know they wanted to fulfill that Rick uh, loses his I hand, that, that but just, this was and not you know the way they to do it. They didn't even get the right hand. It was, it, was, it was his right hand in the comics, and he cut his left <laughs> off in the show. He's got to write his love letters to Michonne. That's, that's what it was. So, I mean, yeah, that was ridiculous. I, I thought the whole... I was like, okay, there's cities. It was a little interesting. I, I, don't, I don't know. Well, I, I guess the fact that they made it. Oh, yes, there is this. There's massive city that the that the government and the military runs, but we keep it a secret because I mean, if it wasn't kept a secret, like the zombies I, I would go all, there. It just all feels very <laughs> because the convenient. zombies are all hanging out in the it's in like, the zombie chat rooms and in the internet, to and it'd be like, itself. why not go to the secret city and and chow down? It's like. I, it but just felt. It sounds all, like more. It's more about people. All of it felt very convenient, and I have to say, for Michonne to shoot down the one helicopter that Rick happened to be in, like it was just okay, so, so convenient. I was thinking that for a while, and then I was thinking, maybe Michonne has taken down a bunch of these helicopters. Okay, I was wondering if Michonne took out Omaha. Watch episode two. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> If you liked it enough, I you know what it was. We I thought there was only the one episode. I didn't realize last night because Maria and I yeah, watched it second. Saturday, and I was like, "How many? Do we know how many episodes there are?" I don't. If there's like six, yeah, I could deal so, with it. If there's like Barry, when did the 15? other episode drop? Was it last night? 
Last yeah, night. It's, it's, it's last been on. Night. Su- it's on AMC it's a Sunday night. It's okay, on, so that's why. So I streaming. watched it. I watched it. It's on television in the, in the late afternoon, and that's why there was only one episode. Okay. Um. Yeah. So I know I'm not going to give anything away at all. The second episode is basically Michonne's perspective. That's so what you, I thought. That's, that's why I, I wanted I, to watch I'll, it to see. Does if, it include yeah. them I'll at least meeting watch on a park that bench? to see where she's been? That was stupid. The the flashback stuff made no sense. Well, whatsoever. that was a dream thing, but yeah, I know, but but we didn't need that. But no, we didn't. I mean, it was just it was just felt. But they wanted to get the two of them together in the in the show. Um, it would have been. I tell you, as I was watching this, I was thinking it would have been kind of cool if the two of them met in Atlanta, like pre in their previous lives, in a random thing, and then totally forgot it. You know what I'm saying? Because it was just like they were in an elevator together. They got stuck in an elevator, or whatever. Like this, it was something that just, you know, too yeah. That that would that would have been more interesting than the dream sequences about the you know, like just ha- random meeting on a park bench you know, type I, thing. I, it's and that the, the good news is there's only six episodes. There's only six episodes. Okay. I don't have a ton I'm watching, so I, I will definitely watch episode two. And then I'll decide from there. I think we and, should. And I this. think we should watch oh, ahead, all six episodes. I don't think it's that big a commitment. And Barry's a third of the way there already. I think we should. Yeah, I'm already a third so we of the can, way there. I'm fine with that. So, I, and look, I, to me, it kind of felt nice to jump back in because it was something we were so involved in for so many years. But I always like. I just Andrew found Lincoln. myself picking it apart, and then. You know, I, I was watching the the credits roll, and I'm like, "Oh, it's still the same creatives that, did that you were see involved." The, Gimple. Did you see the Gimple guy, odd woman that and Gail Ann Heard had the odd woman that that had Rick picked up to begin with? Did you see her in the second episode? Uh huh. Okay, because she wasn't in the first episode, right? But she was in the in the previously on the Walking right, Dead but stuff. She's the but third she didn't name show in the up. Credits. Who was that? I don't remember. She's who the that third was. name in the credits. The woman with the wi- weird Lays haircut. Leanne Brandt or somebody. No, it's it's um. Something I forget what her name is. Um, put, Hang on, I've got the I don't remember. I don't remember, Poly, I don't remember Pollyanna McIntosh. Pollyanna McIntosh. It's she's the third name in the credits, oh. and she gets her name on a screen by herself, and it's right after their two names, and that's why. Interesting. You know, she's the John she's the trash from Lost. I know. Like I couldn't remember if he was on The Walking Dead before. He's on I don't so, think so He comes into the middle of so many shows. Oh, John Locke. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I feel like. Oh. Yeah. I. You know. I mean. I. So I'm kind of. I, I enjoyed the idea. It was good to see Andrew Lincoln back as Rick. Yeah, it's good to see Andrew Lincoln. I don't blame him. Yeah. I mean, he. I think he left thinking he was going to have a huge movie career, and that. Well, they. Quite they didn't do it. He's making a Walking Dead movie to wrap the series up, and he was going to come back in that movie, and then they just never went that way. They um, instead. He drew the Negan storyline out for three more years. Um, did they make? Did he do anything? I don't remember anything he's been in. He was in a romantic, uh, lo- like a love story movie. I no, forget. that's old. That was pre. No, I thought he that, did one after one. He did yeah. something after it. Um, um, yeah, I'm looking it up. Me too. One of the funniest things with watching Love actually is seeing him in that and the. Because it's just so not Rick. Yeah, yeah. Um, Jesus. He hasn't done much at all. No, he really hasn't. Crit- he was in a Christmas Carol. Bunch of voiceover work. I don't know. Really? Nothing. He well, maybe he was just mo- burned out from the. I mean, yeah, I, that show could think, not I mean, have been leading a show like this. For, no, yeah. and it's, it's, leading a show like that was yeah. probably a ton of work. Yeah. Uh, you remember when oh. <laughs> was thinking, the other thing about when we interviewed Seth Gillum and he was talking about like, like standing in, in like waist deep water in that basement for like oh, hours, right, the basement of that church and yeah. then realizing that everyone else had shown up wearing a wetsuit, <laughs> but he hadn't, <laughs> you know, because they all knew, you know, it was like, they'd all done it before. Um, yeah, I, I it's, I'm just, this is interesting. Again, it's IMDb. They, people are giving it a nine out of ten. Okay, on yeah, IMDb. but you look at the rating. You look at the rating for for Walking Dead as a whole. It's way up there too, 
Breaking Bad's a nine and a half. I think the people that stuck with The Walking Dead... Both of them. I know it dropped off quite a bit, but the the people that stayed with it liked it, so I'm not surprised the ratings are high. That's Scott Gimple. I blame him. Yeah, We still blame him. But, I mean, so we'll see. I'll commit to watching all six. No, we love Greg Nicotero. No, no. And his work in this was spectacular. Yeah. So... There you go. I, I think there's, you know, I, I thought by this point there was going to be serious franchise fatigue with this thing because they've milked so much out of it. They've squeezed so much out. And, and you know, they, they've gone for every ridiculous dramatic thing that they could do just for, you know, for, for hype, for the sake of hype. And yet it just keeps going. It's it's you know well it keeps going be- and and I used to work at AMC so you know but still they have nothing else so they just keep they, have they just keep else. milking this yeah it doesn't mean that it's good it just means that that they're going to continue to milk it it's good for you no it's, <laughs> it it's got vitamin cheap, D though. no it's even not this cheap, show but... can't be cheap no especially I'm sure they had to pay him a pretty penny to bring him back but yeah. But really, though, yeah, I, I was I just couldn't like believe a science fiction show or I, I don't think this is all that expensive. I really don't. I, I, I think. Yeah, I think the big shots are all CGI, obviously the, CGI. Um, and they still have a lot in the woods. Very low paid extras, you know, very skinny, very low paid extras in the zombie costumes. Yeah. But the, the other problem that you have just inherently when you have a show that runs for this many years and all the spinoffs is. You got to keep giving the crew raises every year. Like even the people that started on this as low level, you know, camera assistants, if they're still here, they're making they're making a lot more money than right. they did 11, 12 years ago. I, just one totally random question: Why were the zombies on fire? That Rick was I didn't know that Rick yeah. was sent out. Yeah, to... that that, that kind of gets answered on season two, okay. episode two also. Okay, he had to cauterize his his gushing. Well, it was also hand pretty wound. dramatic. Going out with an axe and, and and let me say, incredibly inefficient. When you have guns, and the zombies are on fire, okay, and you know you can take out a zombie with a headshot. Why are you going? Why are you sending people with axes out there? I mean, why, and why not those new kind of twist and that's pull? What I'm well, but it also seems like there's a cast system, and the 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 people that are newly brought into this fold are the ones that are out with the axes. The people that have been there a while are the ones that are using those cool twisty poles with the, the spikes on the end. It's, it seems like they put you in more, at more risk early on in your tenure there, and then the longer you're there, you sort of work your way up. Fair enough. I, but. I found the A and B thing, basically alphas and betas, an interesting thing. Where basically... But they were killing the alphas. Spoiler. Oh, yeah. No, they were they were, you know... They were collecting people. That's that, probably not a bad move. If you oh no sort of, no, it makes perfect sense. It just if that which is know, why that woman lied about Rick and said she that he lied was a about Rick to to save him, and yeah. and you know that's well, what, how what, how did she lie? She, she, she said he was a B. Oh, I see. When I she see. put him on the helicopter, she said he was a B. So they kept him. I didn't hear that. Yeah. Well, yeah, you that, didn't see well, that. You episode. didn't watch that episode. <laughs> B got you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anyway, if you've watched it, let us know what you think. Um, I want to have this we... conversation, even if it, whether we do it on the air or off the air next week, because I'm curious what you guys thought after you see the second episode and how the Michonne perspective ties together. And it sort of ends with them, you know, in the same place. If, if we keep it tight, we okay. can we can do a few minutes on this each week. As we, it's only six episodes, so yeah, um, yeah. Huh. Okay, and we'll see if at the end of it we're the ones who care. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure we will, but we'll see. Yeah. Uh, I, I, okay, I'm going to say box? one last thing. Okay. He's got a daughter out there, or he believes he's got a daughter out there, yet he seems completely obsessed with Michonne. Right? That gets answered in episode two. That, uh, you see what I'm saying? No, though? Well, know, so here's course. something that I didn't know, but Maria had to fill in the blanks for me. Spoiler alert. He had a son with Michonne. I'm not sure he knows about it, but he, there are two kids back home. 
Okay. When when Rick went got up and went into the helicopter, apparently as the show kept going, Michonne was pregnant and ended up having a boy. And there's Rick Jr. out there. They don't address that in the first two episodes okay. of this Rick is just a show. very fertile dude. Okay? Yeah. So, um, or the other guy was. Anyways, so we never got that figured out with Judith. But, um, yeah, but again, wouldn't, like, of your, you got your lover, you got your child. I'm not sure you would be as, as I think I would be probably more obsessed about my child. You know, getting back to well, my Well, they child. were supposedly together. Yeah, but he wasn't talking about Judith, like, constantly. So... Yeah, no, I, I know. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Or writing, well, letters, to, episode, writing he... letters to her the way he was to Michonne. No, but when he was scratching fo- pictures into those phone screens, it was of the two of them. One. There were... There were... It was... There were a couple different couple phones. A couple different phones. Yeah. So... All right, all right. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, last more point, to come last this point week. on that, okay? The la- the set PPS, S- PPS, PPS, or whatever. Okay. Why would you scratch pictures into the hardest surface that you could possibly <laughs> find? <laughs> I'm sorry. It's like tons of engineering goes into making the glass. You could draw a picture. What's that? You could draw a picture it's instead. Tons of engineering yeah. goes into making There's the glass. There's a lot more paper. On these things. <laughs> Okay, almost invulnerable. Okay, and you're scratching pictures. At the- <laughs> okay, never mind. Continue. I just, just. I'll say this: there were a lot of really cool zombie effects, so that okay. was fun. Yeah. <laughs> I hate all that stuff. It's still gross. Okay, so when we were all at our sleepover, um, our slumber party, we wanted to watch a movie, and we decided what. I- we couldn't anyway. We went. We wanted to go to a old movie that maybe not all of us had seen. So Barry apparently had never seen Highlander. And um, I have to say, the two of you have been raving about this movie. I, I would not say raving for years. I, I do not say raving. No, 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 no. You both say, "Oh, that's a great movie." The second one's terrible. There's something first one's special great. about Highlander, and I and I still believe that. And I have probably seen some of it in the past five years not the whole thing because there are parts i don't even remember but there's but uh, go ahead somebody say someone else say something else i have not seen this movie i think now in at least a dozen years okay and i probably didn't see all of it then and i will just say (laughs) this is not the movie i remember (laughs) <laughs> well, and I, I wasn't sure if I had ever seen it or if I had seen parts of it. After watching it, I can definitely say I had never seen it before. So you may have seen like a half an episode of the TV series or something, maybe. Maybe, or maybe I've seen parts of the second movie. I don't know. I mean, I felt no. like I had You'd remember some that. knowledge you of go, this. You can't say that. Yeah. It's so not anything to do but with But I have certainly not seen that this movie, movie before. I've not I had not seen this movie before, that's for sure. There are episodes of the TV series of which I've seen every single episode that are substantially mm-hmm. better than this movie. Um it it's I think the premise of this is great and I was like 2 weeks ago, I was like why would you remake Highlander there's no reason you shouldn't go back and re- just you know figure out a way to make a sequel or something like that you could make this movie much better you really could now this movie is very very mid 1980s it's very stuck in the 80s okay I know I saw it in the theaters in the 80s I did too and I have probably seen it like start to finish maybe three times since then so, and that's an interesting thing too. Let's say there's a movie you really like and it's got its flaws or it's certainly got its, this, so like even Top Gun, let's take Top Gun. Top Gun is a movie made in the 80s, but it's not like stuck in the 80s it's as much. This one is like, it is, it is living in the 80s, it's, it's, you know? It's, the, it's stylistically so stylistic- 1985. Yeah. That yeah. it cannot get past that. 
it's not just about like working girl, big big uh, shoulder pads, shoulder, shoulder pads, pads and, and blah blah blah. Yeah, it's it's stylization. The guy who directed it, Russell Mulcahy, I think, I think was a video music video director and a commercial director. It's the whole thing's a music video. The fast parts are a music video. The slow parts are just stupid. Yeah. Um, but I'm I have this feeling that if you liked it in the eighties or let's say any movie, and have maybe watched it enough so that it's not like a big, giant shock 10, 20 years later, it holds up a little better. I, I still don't hate it. I I know it's got its issues, but there's just some cool factor to it for me, and maybe because I've sort of seen it a couple times along the way. I don't can't explain I, it. I will say I liked it when I first saw it in the theaters. And I think I liked it the second time I saw it, I don't know, probably on like HBO or something like this. I'm not sure I watched the whole thing 12 years ago when I last saw it. I will say that I have not really gone back to this because the second one was so bad. And and the second one in my head is so bad that I kind of feel like it tainted the whole thing. So I was kind of leaving it. That's all true. I was leaving the first film in the place that it was. And I think I actually started watching it. I was like, yeah, I remember all this and I didn't finish. Um, Watching it from one end to the other without maybe falling asleep. um, You fell asleep. There's there's some bad stuff in here. You both fell asleep. There's definitely some bad stuff in here. And, and Oh, there's a lot of bad stuff. And, um, it's a cut to the chase. It does not hold up. It does. It, it, I, I'm not arguing that, no. but for me, there's just something to oh, it. There's, there's some residual value there, but it doesn't. I will say this movie is incredibly ripe for uh, do-over. Okay? I think you could take well, the premise of this movie and the, do the so much better. The premise is still cool. Right. Let, let me immortals. jump in for a second because I hadn't yep. seen it. Yep. So this is my first real experience with it. I will say I think that the premise has merit and should be remade and you could make, you can make a good movie out of this. This was not a good movie. And I'm revoking both of your privileges to ever tell me ever again no, that Willow is the no worst Willow. movie ever. And you can't give me shit for liking Willow because I'm telling you, Willow is a far superior movie to this. That's not true at all. Piece really of crap. It, it just no, 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 no. <laughs> the story is better. The effects are better. The music is better. Everything wait, wait, about... Are the gymnastics better? No. no. <laughs> well, let's talk about the gymnastics, Dave. <laughs> that opening scene... I didn't remember that was, at all. That made The whole opening sequence sense. was insane. There's no reason that you should be doing... An old guy should be doing backflips, supposedly with a sword either in his hand or in his jacket. <laughs> in my mind, the... The garage f- sword fight was like this epic sword fight. It kind fight. of was. And it was not at all. And it all. was like, and I'm watching Epically this, bad. And, I, and I, <laughs> I totally remembered that guy being somebody different. And the I don't remember those backflips. He's the guy who's backflips. It was totally like, it, it was totally, you know, what's your name? Uh, Pris out of... Out of um, yeah. And it's I like very much Pris out of Blade that. Runner. There yes. is no... No efficacy Except to that Chris didn't whatsoever. Have a sword in like her hand. The, this man could have run much faster than he could have done a succession of backflips. And now maybe if he tried it again and he backflipped right into the sword and got his head cut off, that could have been cool. Okay, but it made no sense. <laughs> it made <laughs> no sense. It really it was made like, no sense. It was almost like they're hanging out and the stuntman says, hey, see what I can do. And they're like, oh, we need to use this. <laughs> that, there's no way that was that guy. No, there's no way it was the that dude. The guy, he, he lost like... Maybe it's this, maybe there's this was he like lost, some, he some lost extra four inches and, doing and 25 backflips. pounds when he was flipping. Okay. Um, I would say this is two years prior to Willow. Okay. And... I think I oh God I I'm not ready to go there yet, Mary, but I might I might actually I'm concede. Not, I'm not going trust. To I might concede this... that that put it this way. I think Willow. Well, I do not like the film. It probably holds up better than this does. Willow is a little more timeless than this thing. 
Okay, um, I think you could. I think you could show Willow to somebody today. Who, whatever. But I'm saying this is almost unwatchable because it's so style, so stylized for the I'm 80s. See what this guy and, is directed. And there's a, a lot of very, very, a very ephemeral style stuff. that just did not stick. Okay, this is like season one Miami Vice stuff. If you go back and watch that. But it is that error. It's it's, it's the it's error like of music videos. They just videos. realized it looked silly and schlocky, so they stopped doing this it. This guy, this this okay, um, Russell McKinney. This guy, what year was this? Eighty six. Eighty six. Here's I'm, I'm starting in eighty three. Kim Carnes. This is his director. Bonnie Tyler, Elton John, Culture Club, Duran Duran, Wild Boys video, Berlin, Duran Duran, The Reflex. Elton John, Duran Duran, Go West, Rolling Stone. This is what this guy did. Falco. Remember Falco? Jeez. Jeez I do. Um, Queen. Kim Carnes again. Billy Joel. Matter of Trust. Oh, I'm in that video. <laughs> Are you? I didn't know he directed that. Are you in it? They filmed that on St. Mark's Place in 1986. And me and my friend were walking down St. Mark's Place to go somewhere. Are you recognizable? And I could recognize recognize myself. I'm like in a, in a crane shot. Um, All right. I need you to run that video. Oh, and we take need a, this. Just take <laughs> no, a picture like the with back your phone. of my head. It's fine. It I, the back of your <laughs> head will be very... It. You're a hair boy. It would be very distinct. Yeah. So... But Def Leppard, the blah, 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 blah. He did nothing but... Try. All right. So he maybe he made some good music videos, but... This movie, this, but no, that's the point. He, that's all he did. He directed the second one too. That's okay. That, crazy. You know what? I, yeah. I, it's almost an abomination to even say that Queen did the music for this because there isn't even a, like a recognizable Queen element to the soundtrack. I still think the whole idea of the the, the Highlander and the Immortals and the sword fighting is awesome. Oh, it is too. And Sorry. you know what? If they remake Conce- the movie, no, no, conceptually, you're right. If they remake the movie, they totally need to keep the Queen. They got song. it in the in um, IMDb as as Henry Cavill's Cavill's doing this movie. I don't see him as ah uh, boy. Dude. That would be odd. After he's a little. I don't see him. No, he could, he totally, could, he could do it, but it's a little odd after after doing The Witcher. It's like, you're going to do another sword slinging thing? Um, should be Keanu Reeves. He's too old. He's too old. I, I just also thought Clancy Brown as the Kurgan was funny. Just, like, just because I, I know him from so many other roles, I've never seen him this young in anything. I can't remember it seeing him in much bizarre. anything before this, though. So. Shawshank. Oh, before this, no. Right yeah. before it. Yeah, I, I don't ever. I don't remember seeing him that young. He built his saying. back. He built his career on the back of this role. Um, he was good in it. He was a very over the top. But for what he was, was but fun. you know what? He was, he Holy was a crap! From his a bad, IMDb a character is, from a bad music video. I am scrolling and scrolling and scrolling, and I'm only at 1985. He has a huge IMDb. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's been crazy in crazy. How long he's the John IMDb. Saxon of the modern era. Yeah. He was in the. He was in an episode of Dukes of Hazards. <laughs> yeah. 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 Highlander is his. I think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eighth credit. Is it first movie role? No. Hmm. He was Weasel in a movie called Thunder Alley. He was in Adventures of Buckaroo Bonsai. I mean, background characters. I bet you Highlander was his first lead, like lead. Wasn't role, it? Or that's it, like, right. Yes. Yep. Ma- yep. Major character role. Yep. So. Um, okay. Anyways. Well, well I, I, I can't say whether it held up or not because I've never seen it, but I can say I didn't think it was. Very it, good. I will say this: it does not hold up, but I feel like it. That's, well, that's how all I'm that matters. Characterizing this. That's all that matters. Let us I know if really you like, like Highlander. <laughs> Yeah, but go back really and look would, at it again before you before you state your opinion. It's okay to like stuff like that. I but, I, um, I will say it. It bears defense. I don't think Willow is a different movie now than when you, when it was made. I think this movie is. <laughs> I think this movie it is is it's up. That movie is not stuck in a time. This is this is uh, it's a music video. But it, that's the thing. It's the whole thing in is time. a music video. Yes. Only part of it is, and the other part is just some stupidness. Yeah. 
That that um, final scene where he says there can be only one and all the windows shatter. I that mean, that awesome. might as well have been a Duran Duran music video. <laughs> Absolutely. We got to watch the second one because it it arguably could be worse than Willow. It's could be it's the arguably most arguably could be worse than Willow. I'm sure it's, it's way worse than Willow, Dave. <laughs> it's one Where, of the do stupidest. You know, do you, have we spoiled for you what <laughs> the, the big disclosure in? No, we gotta what? Don't don't. I and think let's you may this. have mentioned it, but I'll be honest, I don't remember. And okay. don't tell me because we should watch it and we should do a commentary on it. Now that we both pro- all of us problem. have seen this again let's do a commentary on the second the, one the problem back in the day of of this the sequel is we li- really like the first movie now you don't like the first movie nearly as much so it may not be oh as no shocking. no no it, there's a there is a betrayal in the first reel of the sequel that just like invalidates everything you liked about the first movie Oh, like Alien Three, where and then they it goes kill the main that, characters all in the first. And then it goes beyond scene. that. No, it's worse well, than it's worse no, than that. That's the thing. Oh, wow. It's worse than that. Okay, uh, Barry, you know how you felt when you first saw Dark Fate? Okay. Yes. Take that to eleven. <laughs> wow. Okay. Because okay. it's like, what? <laughs> Dark Fate's awesome. It's like okay, so Beneath the Planet of the Apes. Okay. If you see, if you go, if you go to watch Beneath the Planet of the Apes, you love Planet of the Apes. In the first reel, Beneath the Planet of the Apes, they say, "Oh, Taylor wasn't really in the future of this planet. This was all on a sound stage. It was a trick." Okay, it's on. It would be on that level. <laughs> okay? okay, let's watch right. it. We'll figure out a time yeah, to watch we'll it. Watch it. Okay. If we don't do a commentary, we'll watch it on the next sleepover. Yep. Yeah. All right. At the next slumber party. Yep. Moving right along. Uh, let's look at what's in the box. Saw you with the box. What was in the box? Uh, what's in the box? What's in the f-ing box? Regular Joe's. What's in the box? Todd. Okay. What's in the box? So, I have been over the last few years. I've been working my way through all the Ghost in the Shell media. I like the original movie. I there's there's actually there's three, four, four movies in total. And like six, the uh, six, Scarlett Johansson movie. You're what's it? This well, that's you have to count that. But there's there's uh, um, and like sixty five episodes of a couple different series, and I actually like the first two seasons of the of this series the best of all of all the media. But I, I wanted to go back and read the original manga that it was based on, and so I had had this book on pre order, and this is the this is the original story and in its original form not japanese and so this is both a a what's in the box and an admission of failure okay to read this properly you've got to read it left to right and i could not wrap my brain around that i tried i got it's in english though it's in english this this, Uh the this is a remastered version so it's not flipped which is the way most a lot of stuff for u.s market is so it's in its original format. It's translated to English, and the original sound effects are Japanese. So there's little little cliff notes that tell you what the sound effects are. Um, really, really good. Beautiful to look at. If you if you love this, I really suggest getting this book. It just came out. It's about forty five dollars on Amazon. Eight hundred pages. Um, oh my god! And um, I ended up going on going on Amazon and downloading the digital versions for the Kindle, and then reading it flipped because I just, like I said, I, I, uh, I couldn't do it. I get like, I just can't retrain my brain at this point. It's like 50 plus years of reading comics. I would get to, you know, cause obviously you're starting from the back and moving forward, but you're reading from the opposite side of the page to the opposite side of the page. So you're reading from the right hand column, the right edge to the left edge. And I would go like two pages and then start going back the other way again and nothing made sense. So beautiful book, really glad I have it, but I ended up spending another $25 to buy digital versions of it, of it and flipped. So like, you shouldn't it. have to work that hard to read something. That's a that lot you of work. Enjoy. It yeah. is. It is. And I did between, um, from the beginning of last week to yesterday, I finished it. So, so, um, yeah. And like I said, and it's, it's really, really good. I will say I, I still like the first two seasons of the TV, the two seasons of the TV series, the best of all of it. So, and we won't talk about the Scarlett Johansson film. So Barry, what do you got? 
What have we here? That's what I have. What have we here? The oh. autobiography of <laughs> Billy D. Williams, um, which happens to be a signed copy somewhere. Oh, I like by, how he signs it. That's cool. By Billy D. So, yeah, he signed it um, the opposite way books are usually signed, which is yeah, kind of cool. It is interesting, yep. This was something we talked about, I think, a couple shows ago. I had ordered one of these months ago. It came, and it actually came damaged. Oh, yeah, yeah, And yeah. I was shocked when Amazon said that they had a replacement. And I said, you're sending me a signed replacement, right? They're like, yep. And it came, and it's in perfect condition. Um, you know I don't like to read, but I like to own books. So I started <laughs> listening to the audiobook <laughs> version, which is narrated by Billy D, which... Is a bit of a disappointment because he's so clearly reading as he's um, talking about it that it's almost hard to listen to. But I am going to get my way through at least the Star Wars-y parts of it, if nothing else. So, um, But, you know, anytime you can get a, a Billy D. Williams autograph in his autobiography, I think it was like $35 that's or $40. Great. That's, that's it was good. well worth it. I mean, you go to a show to get his autograph, it's 100 bucks. So, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's so cool. happy I own it. Um, but I, I just love that it's called What Have We Here? And it's literally Lando Calrissian on the cover of the book. Yeah, so that's, yeah awesome. that's funny. You know, can't, it doesn't get better than that. So that's what I have. Dave, what do you got? Cool. Well, speaking of what's in a box, and the, the guys have seen it. Um, Probably received, what's in a coffin. <laughs> it was. I received a box that was five and a half feet tall by, what do you say, at least 24. Yes, yep. I could have gotten inside of it for sure. Oh, yeah. It's def- <laughs> so I had participated in the recent John Wick uh, prop store auction. And I I set out to get one thing, which was here. We should, we don't, we remember we'd say we'd do stories on Instagram. We haven't done any of that. We should do this, but uh, a nunchucks. I wanted nunchucks and I, the, the ones that where they sold singles or, um, you know, or even sets of them, I, I couldn't say. I wound up buying a, a, a lot that had, uh, these nunchucks, a, a samurai and, Bow or bows and arrows. Um, so I, I the craftsmanship on you guys saw is amazing. Uh, they're all rubber or some kind of urethane, yep. and uh, they've done an amazing job making making these props. So I'm definitely keeping the nunchucks. I'm working on the display. I make. I'm selling a couple of the parts, but I got to say, first of all, very happy with them. They look great. The if you ever want something wrapped that will survive traveling around the world, have prop store, uh, ship it, wrap it up, and ship it. It was amazing how they wrapped this stuff, wrapped in like this uh, muslin fabric, then in small bubble wrap, then in large bubble wrap, and then in like a hundred gallons of of peanuts. Yeah. Those, you know, peanuts. They're really amazing. That, I mean, the nunchucks are cool, and I, I'm glad you got them. The, the samurai sword was outstanding. It is really cool. I really cool. got it. Yeah. So, okay. And it weighs what, like six, six ounces? ounces? Yeah, it's really, Barry, really Barry, How many swords do you own? Um, zero. You, I mean, do you, you, do, you have a sting. Oh, you're. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. I, I, I thought. I, I don't think of that as a sword just because it's, it's not long enough. It's a sword. Yeah, so I have sting, and, and I have. Uh, um, I have a dark saber, which is kind of like a sword, but it, okay. I have a lot of lightsabers. Okay, uh, no, not not, sa- not not lightsabers. So I have two swords. Dave, I think you're becoming a sword guy. Seriously, I don't. I have. Like I have five. long claw, right? Is that I, I have long claw John's, and I have sting. John Snow's sword. I have. Um, what's his face? Inigo Montoya's sword. I have. A bad copy of the Highlander sword. I the have last the, samurai sword. Last this samurai last sword. sword from the last and now, samurai. I may or may uh, John not. John, I'm telling you, Dave. I think John I think Wick. you're becoming a sword guy. I just I'm just saying. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be a sword guy. It, it, you know, um, the Kurgan sword is in that prop store auction. Is it really? Yeah. If it comes in pieces in that case, I would. <laughs> that was a, awesome. I think there's a certain point where, like I said, you you know, I've always I think I've said before, it's like. 
it might be above three, more than three swords, where that becomes a thing. So yeah. You know. Well, and the then sword, you start. The sword is I think you beautiful. get above three, you start thinking about the ones you don't have. Well, that's the thing. What other swords? What other genre swords? There's plenty, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, and you know, I don't like to spend other people's money, Dave. But that Kurgan sword, when I saw it, they have a video of it on Prop Store. Has it on Instagram? A video yeah. of it. It's yeah. pretty, pretty cool. I think you should look at it. Born What's to be on Prop Store? How much? What do you think that goes for? Twelve thousand dollars minimum. Really oh, I was thinking more like twenty. <laughs> probably twenty. Okay, if word to the wise, if you're gonna bid on the Kurgan sword, watch Highlander first, <laughs> <laughs> and then get back to us. Like I, I don't love the Lord of the Rings or any of that stuff, so I wouldn't have any of their swords. But there's definitely other swords to have. There are amazing swords in Lord of the Rings, but the one to me that just I always wanted was St- was Sting because it, yeah, just, it, it it plays. I mean, I know there are other sort of, you know, hero swords in, in that series, but Sting to me. Strider I, and, and sword I is agree. cool, but it's Sting a, it's is... It's exactly the same thing. It's, it's, yeah. um, it's to, how to put it, it's, it kind of just embodies the little guy, okay? When you, you're looking at this yeah. little, you know, the, this, this David versus Goliath kind of thing in the, in the most incredible sense, the, you know, even this guy's sword was tiny, and and um, yeah, so and I have to say the master replicas light up sting sword was done really well yeah. considering it didn't sell well. It got clearanced out at like fifty bucks at Toys R Us way back in the Jesus, day. Jesus, really? Wow. Yeah, it was. I remember walking to Toys R Us and being shocked that it was there, and I bought a second one when I saw it on clearance. But you know, I, I they did a great job on that. It's I mean the way it lights up, the way it, it makes the clanging. Yeah, I, I have an Italian really knockoff cool. that we bought for Evan when we were in Greece, and um, but it's it's hanging on the wall here because it's cool. So, um, yeah, cool. Well, buy your shorts. But anyway, John Wick stuff. They did. They they really. I I was. I, I mean, we've I've bought props before, but you know they made. If you watch, especially this is my the stuff I got is all from the Osaka Continental where there's this big battle, and they must have made hundreds of different things. Just the workmanship on this stuff is is really really nice. They they did an amazing job on that stuff. So it's cool to have some of it and keep some of keep a couple of them. Yep. Um, that's it. Uh, last thought. Uh, Richard Lewis passed away. Yes. Yep. Rest in peace, Richard Lewis. Yeah. I know we knew him on Curb. Do you remember that he was on that show with Jamie Lee Curtis back yes. in the eighties? Yeah, that's yep, actually I the remember. first thing I thought of. Anything but love. Yep. Yeah, that was a good um, show. I worked on a TV series with him in one episode. It seemed like a nice enough guy. I played his photo double in a in a scene. I think I've told that story. Not only do I do music videos, I also do tell. Apparently, yeah. um, <laughs> you just got so but, much uh, depth yeah. beyond being a sword guy. It's just like he yeah. was supposed to be a long shot of him driving by in a cab, and he had very fairly really long hair. Not really long hair, and the casting sent the guy with a crew cut and they're like and they're like dave you have long hair put this jacket on get in the get in the cab <laughs> and i was yeah i was this photo double so i got paid 105 dollars for was that, that in Extra. tattingers that was in tattingers yeah is that out there somewhere can i mean do you have a i have i have one vhs of one episode um Hmm. I don't. I would. I don't. I don't see it ever coming out. But it'd be cool to find it. Yeah. I also we we made twelve episodes. <laughs> I don't know if I ever told you this part. In the thirteenth episode, which I have the script someplace. So this whole thing takes place in a a restaurant. In a uh, yeah. restaurant. I actually watched it and, when it aired. Yeah, and one. So they're going through this, and, entirely um, because of who the male lead was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. you did. What's that? Entirely because Will Decker was because he was in Star Trek. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah. So anyway, at one of the tables, the, the Maitre D is complaining to some the other guy like, "What kind of clientele are we having? There's gangsters here. Look at that table there. That's Greg Mad Dog Pisani and his and his brother Dave the Dude." <laughs> 
<laughs> they were making us characters oh, in the show, funny. but that one never that's got funny. filmed. Oh, that's yeah. funny. Yep. Um, well, check YouTube because no, I had watched you know, he, the year before he'd done Tales of the Gold Monkey, yeah, which yeah. I actually really liked. You know, it was an indie ripoff, but I liked it, and um, and I was like, I remember, yeah, I remember watching it for that reason because, like I said, I thought he was good. So, Tells, yeah. Well, check YouTube because well, we, I mean, every everything <laughs> everything is on YouTube tonight. Before, uh, after I finished working, before Maria got home, I watched season one, episode one of Quark on YouTube. Oh, you did. The quality was excellent. Okay, really good. Really. I, for, I, I mean, the quality of the video. I'm not saying the quality of the show. The quality yeah. of the video was, was really good. Like, I was how shocked was that how good it was. That may be someone in the, in the, um, the production. What's crazy is, you know, listening to it, with, it. And watching and listening with a critical eye and ear, there are John Williams' Star Wars cues that they ripped off in oh, the yeah. soundtrack. <laughs> like, question. blatantly ripped off. Yeah. And... The the name of the episode was "May the Something Be With You." I mean, it was like oh, really. Geez, they ripped it. Off it was a really. total, and and I looked it up. I'm like, it came out in '77, so like, yeah. you know, Star Wars hit, and they quickly whipped oh, up. Oh, they this slapped ridiculous... this together, and you know, yeah. it was funny. There was a time there when they would do funny satirical shows like this. Do you remember the Mel Mel Brooks um, Robin Hood series? I know of it, series. but I never saw when it. When things were yeah. rotten, it was funny. It was really funny, um, and um, you know, it's it's. But again, like I said, it, it's. But you could throw things like that together on a shoestring because it was basically like like doing an extended skit. So. Yeah, it was yeah. called "May the May the Source Be With You." Yeah, yeah, shocking. <laughs> yep. And they had a, an all-knowing, all-being power in it called the Source. So. Jeez, oh, that's funny. Anyway. And one of the okay. crew members was a plant. He was in human form, but Honestly, he was a plant. Honestly, there's only two things I remember from that show, <laughs> and Richard Benjamin isn't one of them. <laughs> isn't one of them. Yeah, the twins. The, the Barnstable twins. So, Trish and Sib. So, yep. Okay, cool. All right, check check out Quark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and see if it holds up. It, it holds did. Up. It, it totally did. I, I actually really enjoyed it. <laughs> All righty, that's enough. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.